Hello, Journal. Is it okay if I call you that? It's a bit formal, I know, but we've only just met. Let me tell you why you're here. Since I was little, I've always dreamed of becoming... As a child, I spent hours upon hours working my way through Terry Pratchett's Discworld novels, but for some reason it was the ridiculous rinse wind in the computer game version that really captivated me. But it wasn't until the credits rolled on Lost World Beyond the Page that I saw the name Rihanna Pratchett was the writer of this game, and everything clicked into place. It's a story of loss and coming to terms with the most difficult situations in life, and it comes from sketchbook games as their first title. And thanks to those guys for the review copy. Does it say and do all the right things? Or do words escape it? Let's find out. And terrible adventures planned for her. It's incredibly difficult to go into the story without spoilers. Let's just keep it vague and say that it deals with many of life's most difficult moments and Rihanna Pratchett does an excellent job of conveying her own experiences and enduing the character with a sense of realism. The game centers around Izzy as she fills out her diary. Wales. Gran and I would go to the beach and look up at the stars, but one night, but also shifts back and forth to a 3D fantasy novel that she's working on. Both the actual and the fantasy story are tied together through many of the themes, and it's the delicately crafted narrative that kept the game alive for me, and made it more than worth pushing through to the end credits. As far as gameplay and controls go then, you'll begin by planning, quite literally within the diary, how the story's gonna go and what your character's appearance is like, as well as their name. You'll be hopping from word to word, using the right stick to grab items with the trigger and pull them into position. Sometimes they'll act as platforms, while at others the word itself will become the action. The simplistic platforming in these moments is functional as a method of pushing the story along, but the nature of using the right stick as a cursor is almost unavoidably clunky with a mouse and keyboard. The thing is though, the diary is so well realised in terms of its writing by Pratchett that even with the foreboding heavy inevitability of the storyline, you'll want to know what happens next. The system is incredibly clever in terms of how it sets up the main game, and as you shift into the 3D world of her fairy tale, it's certainly an impressive transition into a 3D platformer with some puzzle elements. My character I named Robin, and she soon learned the art of harnessing words for their magical properties, such as raising up platforms or rebuilding destroyed areas. You'll learn one or maybe two of these a level as you go through the game, but unfortunately their implementation in actual gameplay terms wasn't great. You'll acquire a rebuild skill which will be followed by six broken bridges and four broken pillars, and the slightly floaty nature of the jumping and platforming in general, in that regard it didn't feel quite right. It works and it's okay, it's just not where Lost Words shines. And I do do think the developer could have mitigated some of the frustrations of stopping, pressing a trigger to open a book, using that analog stick to clumsily select a word and then dragging it out to use, by going for something like radial menu system. It would have been much more accurate and quick to allow players to do it that way. And there's something about having the word floating around the whole time as you're still going about your platforming that became a touch distracting. If these had faded when not in use, or shrunk back down to the size of a firefly, only to spring out into the whole word when needed, this would have made the whole experience feel much more slick. There are a number of collectible fireflies to find through the journey, and they do serve a small purpose at the end of the game. If you die in Lost Words, you'll simply reappear a few moments earlier, and you won't find any adversaries in the way of enemies to fight. The real battle takes place in the environments and trying to overcome using the power of those words. But that said, it's not a challenging experience, and it wasn't until the last level where you had all of the words unlocked, where you're given a little bit more freedom in how you approach some of the puzzles put before you without it being completely obvious. And as a game, that's where it was most successful. If they were to go on to do a sequel set in another world with another story, there's certainly the recipe there for something great, but the execution just faltered earlier on. Despite its flaws, Lost Words is a difficult one not to like. It doesn't outstay its welcome. It tells a complete story, and bar perhaps a few more melodramatic moments, it will be a much tougher individual than I that doesn't feel the connection with so many of the themes on display, and how eloquently they're put across to the player. In the water, being moved back and forth by the tide. It succeeded for me more on its cathartic merits than those of its gameplay 
I have a feeling that sketchbook games would be more than happy with that. Overall, I give story and gameplay combined 15 out of 20, and the controls, they score 14 out of 20. Magic. On to visuals, performance and audio then, much of the footage you'll see in this video is actually from an earlier version of the game, as is so often the case there is a pre-release patch. That being said, performance remains mostly the same bar one bug which I haven't mentioned. You're looking at around about 30 frames per second, but unfortunately there's a bit of a frame pacing issue here. You can probably see it in the footage, it never feels fully smooth. It's okay, but very similar to Glenn's review of Story of Seasons, there's almost that skip every four or five frames, and it's something I've seen in the Unity engine a few times. Now artistically, I think the game looks beautiful. The journal is an incredibly well executed element of the game, but then the shift to side scrolling platformer in 3D, with the parallax in the background, different layers, and some quite advanced lighting techniques, including dynamic lights, reflecting off of the environment and the player, and real time shadow mapping, can look wonderful at times. I love the transitions between stages, you'll go from dusty deserts to the frozen tundra and down into lava filled caves. One area I wasn't too convinced by were the animations of the player herself, from the run cycle to the jumping. There's a hesitancy about its execution, which is a shame in something where you're doing so much platforming. The audio is sublime. To be closer. Look, Clump. Dragonfire. It's here. This has one of the best soundtracks I've heard in a long time. The songs are powerful, they tend to punctuate important moments, and there's a real shift and transition as you move through a stage. The main theme of the game is incredibly emotive, and seems to rise and fall at just the right moments in the story. The voice actor who plays the main character does a decent job for most of the game. The warm lights and enticing smells. There are a few times where it feels a little bit forced, but the Gran does a great job with all of her lines and delivery. Look, compared to most games, the voice acting here is fantastic. It just relies so heavily on it that you notice more when lines aren't delivered quite right. Overall then, I give the visuals and performance 15 out of 20, and the generally stellar audio gets 18 out of 20. I was quite relieved to see the price point of Lost Words. It will cost you £11.99 or your regional equivalent, and it has a download size of 5 gigs. Now it took me around about 4 hours to complete, which is similar to other side-scrolling walking simulator come puzzle platformers, and I do feel like any longer than that and it would have started to really outstay its welcome. It has a clear narrative arc, it tells the story it wants to, and it leaves on a poignant high. I don't see any real reason to go back and collect all of the hidden items, they do play a minor part at the end of the game, but for most this will be a one and done. For £11.99 you're not going to regret the purchase, but the average player would tend, I would say, to pick this one up on a small sale. Overall, I give value 15 out of 20. I've always dreamed of becoming a writer. That's why Gran gave you to me. She always talks about little acorns growing into big trees. For a first game, sketchbook games have done a great job, and much of the credit has to go to Rihanna Pratchett's writing and her ability to convey the most difficult universal truths. It scores a switch up score of 77%. Let me know in the comments is this a game you're interested in? Thanks to our patrons, you guys are amazing and support us each month. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya! Who thought she would never see outside her home village? But the land of Astoria had other ideas. It had great and terrible adventures planned for her. Hello again, Journal. We went to visit Gran in the hospital today. Mum said she was going to be fine. But I saw her crying in her room. She is going to be fine, isn't she? She has to be. I need to finish the story so Gran can read it when she feels better. Now, where were we?